We let so much ruin our day. <laughs> we let so much stupid stuff mm -hmm. get in the way. And one of the things this trip shows me, when you're in a minimalist environment in a survival situation, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't matter. And on my way back, you know, um, and, and coming back to work today, um, hearing different things, I'm like, that nah, really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Whereas two weeks ago, I would have said, oh gosh, what, how, how's it, yeah. you know? And then I'm thinking, yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that. It's not mm -hmm. a big deal. That's, you know, it gives you a different perspective on yeah. things. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. My name is Tyler Harris, and I'm your host. Joseph Caldwell. Also your host. <laughs> and we are the Sales Wolves. Uh Man, we did not plan it that perfectly way. Timed. That was really good, Tyler. Just fit a little bit more natural, and we'll get into why. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> in this episode, but guys, this is episode eighty-four. I'm glad to have the other half of the Sales Wolves crew here. We have had to replace him the last couple of weeks because he's been out of town. I'm glad to have him back and looking scruffier again, which is always helpful. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, um, Joseph literally did just get back uh, from a pretty interesting trip that we're going to have him unpack for us and just talk about it, <clears throat> what happened, and kind of how that relates to you guys there out there in the field uh, selling and maybe some different perspectives that it may put as you go through your everyday life. But glad to have you guys here. The journey started about three and a half months ago, and, um, and I know the character I'm about to mention is not everybody's favorite character, but he is prolific and um, interesting to listen to. Um, have you ever listened to any of Ted Nugent's stuff? No, actually. I know who Ted Nugent is. Yeah. I've heard him speak at an NRA convention one time. Yep. Yeah, he's he probably just NRA threw guy. me right there. In yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got <laughs> I just got him followed by like yeah, half, just, yeah, yeah. At least. half your people just left. <laughs> Literally. But, uh, left. Left. What? <laughs> <laughs> Half of your people left, left. left. Half the lefties left. <laughs> Half the lefties left. I'm a righty lefty. <laughs> Wait. That's a wrongy righty. Or a lefty wrongy righty. <laughs> anyway. Quick, quick. So, so, I heard, so I heard him talking um, on Joe Rogan mm. about three and a half, four months ago. Mm. And he was talking about hunting. And I remember hunting as a little boy, hunting for squirrels and... You know, us skinning them and cooking them. I know that sounds crazy, but uh, for a lot of people, uh, rabbits, birds, stuff like that, yeah. that we would, you know, we, we hunted for small game and stuff growing up. You know, we had BB guns, pellet guns, that kind of thing. But as I was listening to him, I started thinking how the relationship we have with our food. Mm. I know this sounds crazy, but I was like, you know, I want to learn what it's like to be a real hunter and to harvest all of your own food and see if that changes anything in me about the way that I see food, the way that I see meat, the way yeah. that I, you know, and I wasn't sure I could do it, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, number one, I've never bow hunted, okay? And, and bow hunting is hard. Mm -hmm. And number two, I've never big game hunted. And so big game hunting is really hard, especially with a bow. <laughs> and number three, I had never hunted in the mountains of Montana and Idaho, which is hard. Three strikes, possibly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so what do I do? I go to Montana, Idaho, mm. big game hunt with a bow. And it took um, the preparation for it. I prepared every day, you know, I would take, I would take 20 to 40 shots a day, hmm. um, you know, with the bow, I got the bow, got it set to me, started getting all the equipment and stuff to be able to live in the, in, in a survival situation out in the wilderness, mm -hmm. uh, wilderness back country of Montana. Um, and then you have to prepare for the eventuality of something going wrong, yeah. um, which there's a lot of parallels with business and life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the things that can go wrong out there is injury, yeah. right? We're going, I think in the 10 days we were actually in the back country, 
we did over 1,020 floors. So you're going straight up and straight down places, <laughs> um, which means that we, we walked the Empire State Building up and down every day, and we did over 80 miles. Um, so it was, uh, it was really strenuous. Mm -hmm. I tried to prepare for that, but I wasn't ready when I yeah. got there. I wasn't ready for the elevation. Uh, hmm. How my wind, I didn't have any air hardly. I couldn't get enough air most of the hmm. time. And so I tried to get ready for that, but I wasn't ready. Yeah. Um, and then no matter how many times I took target practice shots, it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same in a pressure situation. And then we were going into um, into a situation we're like, like we're the predators here, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're on the Sales Wolves podcast. We're, we're hunters, yeah. as in hunt down the sale, and we equate ourselves to wolves. In that situation, <laughs> I was not at the top of the food chain. Yeah. And uh, there's grizzly, black bear, mountain lion, wolves, and all of those will attack you and mm. eat you and kill you. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, to prepare for that mentally, you know, I thought I was ready, mm -hmm. but then when you get out there and it's in the middle of the night and you're just sleeping on the ground in a sleeping bag and you hear some branches break, it's you're <laughs> like, Jeez. like shit case scared yeah. is what I'm talking about. Uh, you're like, oh dear God. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, um, it's different, man. Yeah. It's very different. And, um, one of the things that that was so unique, um, you know, without getting all gory, I did, I shot a, um, I harvested whatever catch is what some people call it. <laughs> You're killing, right? I, I, I murdered <laughs> a mule deer buck mm -hmm. and um, that's the first, first mule deer I've ever, ever killed. And I wasn't sure how I would handle that. Um, but it had been five days in, and um, and when I got that shot, took the shot, and when we found him, he was still alive, and uh, and so instead of me wasting, not wasting, but instead of me using another arrow mm -hmm. on him, I went ahead and got up close and personal mm -hmm. and took his life. Mm -hmm. So with my knife, and. That's a, that's a different deal, man. When you're looking at another living creature and you yeah. usher them off this earth, it was, uh, it was super different. Hmm. It was super different. And of course we kept all the meat. That's, mm -hmm. what, we, that's what we went hunting for was it was a meat hunt. Yeah. Um, we went for elk. We had three shots that we blew and, uh, and so we didn't harvest any elk, but um, we did harvest that mule deer. And it's different. It's really spiritual. And I know it sounds crazy for somebody who hasn't gone, but it's mm -hmm. a very spiritual thing mm -hmm. to take a life to feed and continue your own. Sure. Um, so it was, it was weird. It was very different. So me, I've never been honey ever, ever. And so it is weird. But when you talk about the spiritual side, to me, it's it, it, that was a spiritual thing to go through, the taking of a life, but also just be putting yourself <clears throat> into a scenario where you no longer are top of the food chain, I would think would be a pretty spiritual process in itself. Mm -hmm. um, that and I was with two guys that knew a lot of stuff and I didn't know anything. And so yeah. I go from this world where, where I'm supposed mm -hmm. to know everything, being the sure. CEO, and I went into a submissive role, <laughs> which was really different for me too. Yeah. Um, it's not a role you see me in every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and I had to trust and rely on their instincts and their knowledge and learn from them. Um, but when we go back to that, that deer, I think part of the spiritual aspect of that is that I was so thankful mm. for the sacrifice mm. that that deer made. And through that sacrifice, life continues. Like yeah. it's the same thing. We just don't. We just don't get it. Like people stopped and ate a hamburger today, but they never looked sure. the cow in the eyes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They never. They never were truly grateful for the sacrifice that cow made. Or bacon. You, mm -hmm. bet you're a big bacon fan. Um, I am. You know, it it gives you a different relationship to be the one that looks in that animal's eyes and super grateful and super thankful. 
and spiritual is the only word I can I hmm. can come up with. Isn't that weird? It is, I mean, it's it's interesting. Um, it's, and a thing that's interesting for me is the perspective of if you, as you guys, if, if you've watched a lot of the episodes of the Sales Wolves podcast, um, if you're finding this for the first time, definitely go back to the very beginning. There's yeah, lot, this is a not lot a of, normal one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff in there that's more sales related. Um, well, you, you're hunters. If you're yeah. a salesperson, you're but, hunting. But mm-hmm. as you go through a lot of our episodes, we've talked about this idea of, of seeking discomfort. And yeah. Joseph, more than anyone I know on this planet, has made this active pursuit of discomfort. And when I say active, meaning always searching for other areas to get uncomfortable and being aware of when you're getting comfortable. Mm-hmm. And so to hear a podcast, think about how many times you hear a podcast, you see a movie, you watch a TV show, you hear something on the radio, and it's something that is something you, foreign to you. And it's just like, oh, that's, that's cool, that's unique. But it doesn't go any further, right. typically. But to take that, and all of a sudden within three months, to be on a freaking mountainside in, in Montana. Let me tell you, the first I mean, two that's, days, that's, that's, I thought. That's drastic. In the first two days, I thought I had made a mistake. Hmm. This is going to break me. Kim thought that too. I know. <laughs> no, no, we all thought that. When I, when I talked like, to her. What, what is he doing? When I talked to her, I, I told her, I was like, I had no idea. I yeah. had no idea how hard this would be. And I sent Tom Shea a message on the way back. I was like, Tom, your 24-hour walk helped get me ready for this. Hmm. Uh, just because by, by the third, fourth day, my excuses, the reasons why I quit stuff on this earth, mm-hmm. were screaming in my head. Hmm. Were screaming in my head. In fact, David turned around at one time, and he goes, why do I keep hearing you say this is fucking stupid? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that's why I quit stuff. That's my excuse. That's one of my excuses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is, is you go, this is stupid, man. Yeah. Why am I doing this? And, and, and so it taught me a lot about me, too. It, it took me deeper into who, who I am, the reasons I I quit the reasons I stick to stuff mm-hmm. um, and man I'm, I'm telling you to keep going through all that by the by the day six seven eight my wind was up yeah I mean I felt like a billy goat on <laughs> those mountains yeah the pack didn't weigh as much um, the ground actually felt comfortable when I would lay on it I'd be like oh Thank God, I can finally sleep. <laughs> like, like it was, it was yeah. different than the first couple of days, and so. What was what was one part that was actually like fun, like genuinely, like I am having fun right now. Um, when you finally got the shot. Yeah. Because we worked five days for the first shot I took. Yeah. Then we worked another four for the second shot, and then we worked two That's more crazy. for for um, Aaron's shot. Two, like mm-hmm. five days we worked, we tracked, we bugled and called these elk in, we looked for them. We, I mean, it, climbing, the stuff that we climbed, mm. none of the pictures do it justice. Yeah. Like if, if, the, if there was a misstep on some of those, serious injury would, would ensue um, or death. And, um, and some of that stuff, falling down some of that, I would just as soon have died. Yeah. Because yeah. it would have mangled you up pretty bad. Yeah. Um, but I think that's so. that's an interesting parallel we can talk on real quick with sales, um, especially those that are in sales um, systems and processes that are a longer term sales cycle. Um, because I know with with one of our business models, it's very high, uh, very fast paced. Right. And when I came on board with, with our company, that was something that I needed at that time uh, to build my confidence back up. I needed sure. to sit down in front of you and you say yes or no, and, right ho- and hopefully yes, right then, so I can move on to the next person. Yes, yes, no, cool, yes, yes, no, yes, 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 no, yes, 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 no, okay, I'm doing better. But for those that are in a sales cycle that takes months, yep. I mean, we, we did a Sales Wolves podcast a few weeks ago uh, with a guy, Jason Ciano, and he was talking about he's closing deals now that are 18 months in. Yep. And the work that went in over 18 months <clears throat> that ultimately led to a sale, it seems to me that those sales would be so much more rewarding oh, yeah. when you know all the steps along the way in that process, all of the communication, all of the meetings, all of the planning. And then finally, when you, like you said, get the kill and this, you get that sale. It's like, oh, like it was all, it was all mm-hmm. worth it. Yep. Um, and it makes it almost to where you have to, you have to be so much more mentally focused so that all that time, all that planning and preparing doesn't go into a missed shot or right. a, 
a not going into not getting a sale That's into right. a, some form of rejection because then it's like oh it's gonna be that much more painful yep. it's like we've been tracking this for five days i've been doing this for six months i've been calling on this customer uh, potential customer and they finally went with somebody else it's like oh it's just and so you think you think just like i thought i thought i was prepared mm. until i got in it mm. and i realized just how unprepared i was mm. And I've learned that in business too. I thought yeah. I was prepared in, in, in business in certain areas until something happened and it showed me my unpreparedness. Hmm. And life will always present those circumstances to you to either show your preparedness or show you where you were not prepared. And so now going in again, going yeah. into another hunt like this, yeah. I've, I, there's a lot of different things I'll do differently. Hmm. Um, a lot of different things. I think Nathan usually talks about um, you, you will always perform to the level of, of which you prepared, or you always fall back. You will always fall back to the level of your preparedness, or something like practice. that. Yeah, the level of, of practice, um, which is interesting. And I think with our sales process, that's why with our business that we just absolutely lean on role playing and practicing and, mm -hmm. and trying to put yourself in to as close of that situation as humanly possible. Right. So not just going out in the backyard and shooting the bow, it's, you know, somehow simulating that environment to where mm -hmm. you can get yourself super, super tired for X number of hours, then pull out the bow and oh, then yeah. practice into what it's really like. Because I can imagine it's very different being fresh pulling that bow, pulling that um, arrow back versus when you're like, even your legs are shaking oh, yeah. and, and you're just all you can do to stand up. And now all of a sudden you got to make a, make a shot. I had a, a bull bit. crash through the trees at me. <laughs> I'm creeping up through this up this hill, and I'm exhausted and shaking, and I've got an arrow knocked because we had seen, and they had already <coughs> gone up 150 yards on both sides of me. And this bull comes crashing. I guess they had scared him, and he comes crashing down through the through the woods right at me. And I hear these trees shaking and stuff cracking and breaking, and I'm like, it's gonna be a grizzly. <laughs> I know it's gonna be a grizzly. I'm gonna die. This is it. And so I've got full draw of whatever's coming through the yeah. trees, man. And this bull comes flying out straight at me, and I was like, he's gonna run over me. What do you do? What do you do in this situation? <laughs> Nobody told me about yeah. this situation. Well, he runs right past me, skids to a stop, comes back out, and stares back up, and presents himself hmm. a sacrifice. And I blew the shot <laughs> because yeah. you startled. Yeah, I was so nervous. Oh yeah, it's not the same as when you're. And so, I learned. I learned so much on this trip about me, about hunting, about survival. Um, and and one of the one of the biggest factors, man. We let so much ruin our day. Hmm. We let so much stupid stuff mm -hmm. get in the way. And one of the things this trip shows me, when you're in a minimalist environment in a survival situation, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't matter. And on my way back, you know, um, and, and coming back to work today, um, hearing different things, I'm like, that ah, really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Whereas two weeks ago, I would have said, oh, gosh, what, how, how's it, yeah. you know, and then I'm thinking, yeah, well, we'll deal with that. That's not mm -hmm. a big deal. That's... You know, it gives you a different perspective on yeah. things. Um, and it's the most uncomfortable I've been for two weeks in my life, probably. <laughs> um, it's, it's, that was tough. So for the average person that's watching or listening to this podcast that can't take 10 days and, and go to Montana, what are some things, what are some things to get people outside of their comfort zone or to put people in those situations where they can have a similar type experience of just getting super uncomfortable or at least experiencing some of these things that you came back with this fresh perspective. You, you know what? You can do it no matter where you're at. So yeah. last time Kim and I went on a little vacation together, um, and people do this kind of stuff all the time. We're at an all-inclusive resort, mm -hmm. and those are posh, and you eat your face off and drink your face off. But um, the guys came around, and we're talking about scuba diving yeah and I know that that's fear of Kim's mm. that that was a big time fear of Kim's so I was like why don't you just try it in the pool <laughs> why don't you just try it in the pool and so this is a dumb little thing but she got all the gear on and she scuba dived in the pool mm. which she was super terrified to do 
And after she did that and she felt good about herself, that put her in an uncomfortable place. Yeah. Then she was like, she wanted to try the ocean. And so we went out and we went like 40 feet. Hmm. And that put me in a different environment, right? yeah. an uncomfortable situation. So it's always pushing and looking for where, where can you make yourself uncomfortable? You know, I do ice baths. Yeah. They're miserable, they're painful. I get in the pool all year round, every morning, two, three, four in the morning, mm -hmm. when it's as coldest out as possible. Um, but it, that's uncomfortable, you know? And when that becomes comfortable, I'd try something different. You know, you can find something anywhere to make yourself uncomfortable. Join a Toastmasters group. Yeah. People hate That's public true. speaking. Join a Toastmasters group. Do some presentations in front of groups. Um, you know, if if you think you're not a runner, go fucking run. Mm. Right? Go 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 on a run. Go go do a mile and and make your and that'll be uncomfortable for you. If you've never been in a gym, hire a personal trainer and go in a gym five days a week for the next six months. That'll get you out of your comfort zone. Or don't hire a personal trainer. Do YouTube workouts and, and mm -hmm. go in there. That's cheap. Um, you know. But I think there's something to be said for intentionally taking time that would normally be used for a vacation that would be full of just pleasure and co being comfortable and using one yeah, of those one, yeah. using one of those like long weekends to go do something maybe not to the extent of what you did but go to camping. be able to go camping or go yeah. hiking or just do something to get yourself out of the your normal everyday situation i think just being in nature for that period of time being grounded for the first time maybe in in yeah. months and getting out to where your cell phone doesn't work all the time oh, yeah. and where you're not just sitting Shut there scrolling down. on social media. It's almost, it's not sensory deprivation because your senses are, you're, yeah. you were probably at an all time high of just taking oh, all yeah. this, the beautiful stuff in, Beautiful, but it's, it's depriving you of all the technology and all yeah. the other things that are just distractions. I think, um, would be valuable for someone to be a vacation, <clears throat> but they would come back with again that new perspective, that fresh Different outlook, and they would they would walk into that sales meeting Monday morning with a little bit of a different viewpoint or sure. vantage point. I think would be yeah, interesting. Yeah, I was walking. I was, we were probably five miles back in the back country, hmm. and all of a sudden it dawned on me. I was like, I don't have any toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't bring any toilet paper. It's not good. And that's not good. And I asked those guys, Yo, you guys have toilet paper? I'm like, of course we do. And I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> You're quickly in your mind going over the, the poison ivy leaves and what those yeah, look yeah, like yeah. versus what, what regular leaves. Leaves of three, let them be. <laughs> Please let that be true. Yeah, that's awesome. So the moral of the story is Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. Does not it, lie. Does not, does tell not lie. <laughs> No, but that's awesome. But we wanted to come at you guys with a little bit of a different angle uh, on this Sales Wolves podcast, be able to share uh, Joseph's story uh, of what he's been through over the last two weeks. Literally, he came back, he's back to the office today. Like, I haven't even heard the story that he just shared, which is, which is awesome. Um, but with that, this is episode 84. 84. The Sales Wolves podcast. I am a whole lot... Uh, less rough and tough host Tyler Harris. <laughs> and, Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Uh, oh.